Hi everybody, this is Julian from RC. In a previous video, I introduced you to RC Conductor, our new inference platform that automatically sends each prompt to the best SLM or LLM. In this video, we're going to use a very popular chat interface called OpenWebUI, and I'm going to show you how you can very easily add Conductor to OpenWebUI. So not only will you be able to use the best SLM or LLM for every prompt, but you will also be able to use all the cool tools that are available in Open Web UI, like uh, attaching files, using retrieval augmented generation, and so on. Okay, sounds good. Let's get started. Of course, you will find installation instructions in the GitHub repository for Open Web UI. There's a, a pip install uh, path, but I actually recommend using Docker, uh, which is uh, very straightforward and worked for me every single time. So you will need to have Docker Desktop. So if you don't have Docker Desktop, please go to uh, docker.com, the Docker website, and download uh, Docker Desktop and install it. It should only take a few clicks, okay? And then once you've done that, um, that's the command you need to run to install um, Open Web UI on your machine, okay? And that's just a, a, a simple Docker command. Uh, we don't really care what it does. It's just going to download the image and uh, start the Open Web UI container on your local machine, right? And it will start automatically and you will see it running in Docker, okay? So here I've done this already. We see um, the image has been downloaded and uh, the container has been started automatically, okay? And if we double click on this, we can see it's running, okay? So this will only take a minute, maybe two minutes, because you, you're you downloading a fairly large Docker image, but that's about it, okay? So once the container is running, you can open your browser and uh, go to localhost port 3000, and you will see uh, the sign-in window. If this is really the first time you run open web UI, you actually need to register, you need to create your admin user, um, so just use your email address and, uh, and a password and you'll have that user created in no time, okay? So I've done that already. Uh, let me sign in and then I'll show you configuration for Conductor. Okay, so here I'm signed in and I am actually the admin user, okay? So the first thing you wanna check is that going to the admin panel here and looking at settings and looking at connections, you want to check that direct connections is on. It should be on by default, okay? Um, if you are not the admin user for your uh, Open Web UI deployment, go ask them if, uh, if this is enabled or if they can uh, do it for you, okay? This is really important because this is what will allow us to create connections to conductor uh, through the OpenAI compatible API endpoint, okay? So we absolutely need this thing to be on. Again, if you just installed it and you're the admin user, it's gonna be on. So now we're ready to configure conductor. Of course, you need to have a conductor account. So if you haven't created one already, please go to conductor.rc.ai and you can register there. Okay, um, registration is free. Uh, Conductor is a pay-as-you-go service, so you can create your account and you won't pay anything until you start using the service. In fact, at the time of recording, uh, we're giving away $200 of free inference credits. So enjoy the credits while they last because they're not gonna last forever, okay? Um, so once you have registered, uh, going into your account, you need to create an API key, okay? Obviously, I have one already, so just click on Create API Key, and you're gonna get your key here, okay? So once you've done that, uh, and make sure to save the key because it will only be displayed once, okay? Here, as you can see here, I cannot view the key, so if you fail to save it, you know, you need to delete it and create another one, uh, but save your key because you're gonna need it for the Open Web UI configuration. Okay, now that we have an API key for Conductor, we can connect Open Web UI and Conductor. So go to Settings, 
match direct connections, enter the conductor endpoint URL. Whoops. Okay, don't forget slash v1. Paste your API key. And we need to add the auto model, which means automatic, obviously. And uh, that tells conductor, hey, uh, use whatever model works best for each prompt. Okay, so don't forget to click plus. Uh, we can verify the connection and save. Okay, so that's fine. While we're at it, uh, why don't we add um, the models from the model engine in case we want to call them individually, okay? And it's the different URL, but it's the same key, okay? And here we don't need to enter any model ID. Uh, we will list automatically the models that are available on that endpoint, okay? Well, let's verify the connection again. Good, and save. Okay, so I think we're ready here. Good. So now if we go to a new chat and look at models, okay, we see a lot of models. So we see auto, uh, which is the conductor uh, router. And then we see the models that are available in our platform, uh, our own SLNs, which I've covered in previous videos, you know, the virtuosos and, you know, spotlight or visual language model. Maybe we'll give it a shot, okay? Okay, so let's try this. Let's select the uh, router mode and let's, uh, let's run a prompt. Write a short welcome message for a new employee joining RCAI next week. Why not, okay? Okay, so as usual, we're sending the prompt to conductor. The router model will pick uh, the best model for the job, okay? So according to prompt complexity and domain um, and cost effectiveness. And here's the answer we get, okay? So that was a simple prompt. So chances are we used uh, a simple model. So now let's take a quick look at the conductor uh, UI uh, to see what went on. Okay, so back to the uh, conductor UI, we can go to API history. And sure enough, uh, we see the prompt we just ran, okay? We write the short welcome message. We see the input tokens, the output tokens. Uh, we see the, the price, which is silly low because uh, we certainly used a, a, a small model, potentially the smallest model available here. And then we see the, uh, the extra uh, prompts that uh, Open Web UI runs to generate a title and generate tags. Okay, and likewise, they're silly, silly cheap. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Uh, let's run. Uh, let's run a more complex example. Okay, so now let's try. What's the difference between Logit's distillation and hidden state distillation? Um, can I do both with PyTorch? Okay, there we go. Okay, obviously much more complicated question, uh, very domain specific, uh, code related, etc., etc. So now we're getting probably an answer from a different model here. Right, very detailed answer, key differences, a bit of code. Okay, so clearly here, we're not using uh, the, uh, the simplest model. We're using something that is more elaborate, okay? And again, if we go to the history here and reload that page, okay, uh, well, we can see the cost of this particular query was certainly higher. So we certainly used 
one of their larger models. Maybe we used one of the uh, one of the LLMs to answer this. But honestly, we don't really care. Um, you know, we're uh, we're just seeing that you know simple prompts go to very cost-effective models, smaller models, and uh, and more complicated prompts go to uh, more uh, elaborate but also more expensive models. Okay. So that's uh, exactly how the service should work. And we see, of course, total cost here. Okay, so now let's try maybe to um, add uh, maybe a PDF file to open web UI and ask questions. Okay, so now let's go and fetch a research article. Ah, this one will do. Good one. So let's upload it. And now let's ask, does this article mention RC AI. Ah, okay. It mentions merge kit. Interesting. Okay. Um, tell me more. What does it say about merge kit? Okay, so it tells me the article discusses a comprehensive evaluation of Merge Kit, just demonstrating its benefit, comparing its performance against other merging methods, etc., etc. Okay, maybe we can ask uh, does it mention RC Fusion? Hmm, let's see. Okay, yes, it does. A method called RC Fusion, etc., etc., which is one of the latest techniques our team added to MergeKit, etc., etc. Okay, so of course, under the hood, there is certainly a lot happening, and you know, depending on the complexity of the uh, of the prompt you're sending, it's going to select one model or the other. But I mean, you don't again, you don't really need to know that. Uh, you just need to know that. You're spending your money very efficiently. So how much money you're actually saving um, compared to using LLMs for everything is left as an exercise to the reader. But just for reference, our smallest model and most cost efficient model, which is the Blitz model, is 300x times cheaper than Sony 3.7. So any prompt that Blitz could handle and that your sending to Sony A37 instead, uh, well, you're paying 300 times too much. Okay, so I wouldn't do that too often. But hey, who am I to say? Okay, let's do uh, one last thing here. I want to show you how you can use individual models if you want to. And that's really simple. Let's create a new chat. Okay. And because we, um, because we also configured the um, on the model engine API, right? Models.rc.ai, we also see all the individual models. So maybe we could try Spotlight. Okay, Spotlight is a, a visual language model. So let's go and grab an image. That's the image, pretty cool one. And now we can just say, describe the image in detail. Okay. All right. The image shows a vibrant urban scene in front of the NASDAQ building, blah, blah, blah. The billboard announces a funding round by RCAI. Okay, there's one E too many, but that's okay. That's easy to fix. Uh, the building itself is modern with latch glass windows reflecting the bright sunlight. Oh, yes. Sunlight in New York. Okay. Anyway, we get a description. So you can use all of those individually if you want. Uh, and again, we can see Blitz, which is uh, super cost effective. Or you can just set uh, the, the mode and the model to auto and let conductor do its thing and select the, the right model for each individual prompt. So that's really what I wanted to show you. Um, you know, thanks to our uh, OpenAI uh, compatible API, it's super easy to use Conductor and to configure Conductor into all those nice open source tools like uh, like Open Web UI and there are many more. And it should always be the same thing, right? Enter the uh, URL or Conductor and then your key and you should be good to go, okay? And so now 
you can use all the cool stuff that open web UI comes with like you know attaching files and and running rag and, and so on there's an endless list of tools okay and this is a, a pretty cool user experience I think all right that's it for this one I hope you liked it um, if you have questions please ask your questions in the comments and yeah, much more coming as usual and until next time keep rocking